Welcome to the MineArc Systems Operator Training Video. This short presentation will show you how to operate a mine-safe, compact design refuge chamber with ELVP scrubbing. Step 1. Enter airlock. Before entering the airlock, ensure that it is vacant by looking through the portal window. If airlock is occupied, wait until it is vacant and the internal door is closed. Enter the airlock by rotating the handle to the vertical unlock position. To secure the door, rotate the handles to the horizontal lock position. Lights and siren will automatically activate via the motion sensor. Step 2. Open airlock flush valve. Open airlock flush valve to purge airlock. If compressed air supply is contaminated or non-operational, close airlock flush valve and activate backup flushing system. To activate the backup flushing system, open all compressed air cylinders by rotating valves counterclockwise. Push and hold button to flush airlock. Step 3. Enter inner chamber. Enter inner chamber by rotating the handles to the vertical unlock position. To secure the door, rotate the handles to the horizontal lock position. Step four, turn on electrical switches. Turn the chamber's lighting to manual mode by turning on the switch marked light on the front right hand side of the scrubber. Ensure the switches marked strobe, siren, radio, and DGM or auxiliary are on. Please note, leaving the siren and strobe on in an emergency will help personnel locate the refuge chamber. Step 5. Rotate battery control switch to emergency. Locate the battery control switch and rotate to the emergency position. The system is now operating on the emergency battery bank. Please note, in the event the emergency battery bank runs flat, rotate the battery control switch to the standby position. This will allow the remaining charge in the standby bank to operate electrical components. ELV system models are fitted with a battery isolator switch instead of a battery control switch. Ensure the battery isolator switch is on. Step 6. Switch on inverter charger. Turn the inverter switch located on the front of the scrubber to the on position. This will allow the air conditioner to operate. Please note, if the battery control switch is activated out of sequence, a low battery light may show on the inverter. Switch the inverter off and then on again to reset. Step 7. Check compressed air. Push the button on CAM's electronic control unit, ECU, so that blue light illuminates. Check the compressed air valve is fully in the open position. Do not adjust regulator as flow is preset. Place hand over auto muffler to feel for airflow. Step 8. Turn on air conditioning. Turn on the air conditioning system using the remote control. Or, to start the air conditioner manually, press the EOSW button. If external power fails, set the temperature to 86 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius using the remote control. Step 9. Commence gas monitoring with Aura FX Fixed Gas Monitor or Manual Gas Sampling Tubes. Refer to the Gas Testing Guide at the rear of the Photographic Procedures Manual for procedures for both fixed and manual gas sampling. Do not remove your self-rescuer until gas monitor levels are confirmed as acceptable. Refer to the bottom of the life support settings table on the chamber wall for a guide on reading alarms and ensuring that breathing air quality is maintained. Please note, the Aura FX fixed gas monitor will periodically alarm when it detects changes in gas levels. Carbon monoxide levels high. Commence scrubbing or check if the mark absorbed CO cartridge is seated correctly. Only alarms displaying readings outside of the acceptable gas monitor levels require attention. If appropriate, make contact with the emergency control center via radio or phone. 
remove PPE and store underneath seat. If compressed air fails or gas monitoring reads outside of acceptable gas levels, close the compressed air valve and proceed to step 10. Start the scrubber unit. Step 10. Install Marcosorb CO2 cartridge. Remove one Marcosorb carbon dioxide cartridge from its storage location. Remove cartridge from its packaging and place on the right-hand side of the scrubber. The cartridge will slot into place with the rubber seal on the bottom side. Replace when the gas monitor reads CO2 as being greater than 1% or as indicated by the life support settings table located on the chamber wall. Step 11. Install Marcosorb CO cartridge. Remove the Marcosorb carbon monoxide cartridge from its storage location. Remove cartridge from its packaging and place on the left-hand side of the scrubber. The cartridge will slot into place with the rubber seal on the bottom side. Once installed, the Marcosorb CO cartridge does not need replacing for the entire duration. Step 12. Turn scrubber unit on. Turn the scrubber unit on by activating the switch marked scrubber on the front panel. Step 13. Install oxygen regulator. The oxygen regulator is located inside the storage container. Ensure the oxygen regulator and cylinder valve are free of oil, grease, and other contaminants before installation. Wearing the supplied gloves, fit the oxygen regulator to the oxygen cylinder and tighten. Ensure you do not over tighten. Open the cylinder fully by rotating the valve counterclockwise. Step 14. Adjust oxygen regulator. Adjust the oxygen regulator to 0.5 liters per chamber occupant. Round up to the nearest flow rate marked on the regulator. For further information on oxygen flow rates, refer to the life support settings table located on the refuge chamber wall. Using the timer and marker, record gas levels hourly on the gas level recording charts located at the rear of the photographic operating procedure manual. When all oxygen cylinders are empty, proceed to step 15. Step 15. Remove oxygen candle and fit into holder. Ensure hands are free from oil or grease. Remove the oxygen candle and fit into the candle holder. Ensure that candle holder is positioned away from other objects. It is important that you only ignite the oxygen candle when all oxygen cylinders are empty. Warning! Check steel structure for damage, evidence of oil or grease on the unit. Ensure seal has not been breached. Do not use damaged or contaminated units. Step 16. Break the tear seal. Lift the T-handle and break the tear seal to expose the ignition port. Caution! There are exposed sharp edges on the tear seal. Step 17. Remove the igniter match. Remove the igniter match from the storage container. Check that the red phosphorus is in place and undamaged. Place the toggle bar in the lower position hole. Avoid contact with the red phosphorus tip while handling. Step 18. Ignite the oxygen candle. Screw the igniter match down into the ignition port until it can go no further. Do not remove the igniter match after starting. Caution! Once ignited, oxygen candle generates extreme heat. Use only the supplied gloves for handling the oxygen candle once ignited. Avoid unnecessary movement. Gas Testing Guide Excess carbon monoxide detected in refuge chamber with compressed air operational. If carbon monoxide level exceeds 25 ppm with the compressed air operational, carbon monoxide levels high. Commence scrubbing or check if the Marcosorb CO cartridge is seated correctly. Isolate the compressed air supply at the ball valve and start the scrubber unit. 
fixed gas monitor testing guide with scrubber and compressed oxygen cylinders activated. Aura FX fixed gas monitor is operational at all times. It displays a current reading and a trend for the previous one hour for each gas and temperature. Excess carbon dioxide detected in the refuge chamber with the scrubber unit operational. If carbon dioxide levels exceed 1% with the scrubber unit operational, carbon dioxide levels high. Commence scrubbing or replace Marcasorb CO2 cartridges. Remove Marcasorb CO2 cartridges from the scrubber and replace with new cartridges. Refer to the life support settings table for approximate Marcasorb CO2 cartridges replacement duration. Excess carbon monoxide detected in refuge chamber with the scrubber unit operational. If carbon monoxide level exceeds 25 ppm with the scrubber unit operational, carbon monoxide levels high. Commence scrubbing or check if the Marcasorb CO cartridge is seated correctly. Ensure the Marcasorb CO cartridge has been properly placed on the scrubber tray. The cartridge will slot into place with the rubber seal on the bottom side. Excess or insufficient oxygen level in the refuge chamber with oxygen cylinders activated. If oxygen level is less than 18.5% or greater than 23%, oxygen levels low. Increase oxygen flow rate by one notch. Adjust the oxygen regulator up or down one notch accordingly. Please note, for models that include an automated oxygen delivery system, it is not necessary to adjust the oxygen regulator. Apparent temperature in the refuge chamber, high or low. If apparent temperature is greater than 95 degrees Fahrenheit, 35 degrees Celsius, or less than 32 degrees Fahrenheit, zero degrees Celsius. Temperature level high. Ensure air conditioner is turned on and set to 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Adjust the air conditioning accordingly using the remote control. Manual gas testing guide. Minarch refuge chambers are supplied with either fixed or manual gas monitoring systems. Manual gas monitoring is to be conducted hourly using a gas sampling pump and detector tubes. This must be started after confirming the compressed air ball valve is fully opened. Remove the gas tech sampling pump from the storage container and from its protective case. There are three types of glass detector tubes. 31B tubes test the oxygen level. Two L tubes test the carbon dioxide level. And one LC tubes test the carbon monoxide level. To begin testing the air inside the chamber, remove a 31B oxygen detector tube from the appropriate packet. Break off both ends of the detector tube by using the provided tube breaker located on the gas tech sampling pump. Confirm the pump handle is fully pushed in. Then insert the detector tube into the rubber inlet in the pump with the arrow on the tube pointing towards the pump. Align the red line on the back plate with the 50 milliliter guide mark. Direct the tube end into the center of the refuge chamber and pull out the handle halfway along the guideline to the lock position. Wait until the specified sampling time has elapsed, which is approximately one minute. The completion of the sampling can be confirmed by the appearance of the white flow finish indicator on the handle. Unlock the handle by turning it more than one quarter turn and restore it to the initial position. Remove the detector tube from the pump and read the sampling result. Using the marker stored in the storage container, record the results on the chart provided at the rear of the photographic operating procedures. If oxygen level reaches 23% or greater, adjust the regulator back one notch. If oxygen level reaches 18.5% or less, adjust the regulator up one notch. Repeat the above process using the 2L carbon dioxide detector tubes and a 100 milliliter stroke. The specified sampling time for CO2 is approximately two minutes. If carbon dioxide level reaches 1%, turn the compressed air supply off at the ball valve 
and start the scrubber unit. If the scrubber unit has already been activated, simply replace the Marcosorb CO2 cartridge. Repeat the process using the 1LC carbon monoxide detector tubes and a 100 milliliter stroke. The specified sampling time for carbon monoxide is approximately four minutes. If carbon monoxide level reaches 25 ppm, turn the compressed air supply off at the ball valve and start the scrubber unit. If the scrubber unit has already been activated, check to ensure that the Marcosorb CO cartridge has been properly placed on the scrubber tray. For further instructions on operating the refuge chamber, refer to the photographic operating procedures located in the operating procedures manual binder. The most important thing you can do now is to make sure your refuge chamber is maintained in good operational order. So in the unfortunate event you need to use the chamber, you can feel safe knowing that it is ready for use. This can be accomplished through weekly checks and regular servicing, which can be carried out by Minarch Systems. For further details, or if you have any queries regarding the operation of a refuge chamber, please contact Minarch Systems or visit the website at www.minarch.com.